The BYD E6 is a five door station wagon hatchback BYD call it a crossover uh, it's a five seater it's front wheel drive it's got a permanent magnet motor it has an 82 kilowatt hour battery it uh, has a range of about 350 kilometers uh, with factory tires on it it has AC only charging up to 60 kilowatts it's five star safety rated on the right car website and it's eligible for the full clean car discount of three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars this particular car is a, my own car it's a 2019 um, if you're looking for an EV and you want something with uh, more range and uh, better battery longevity than something like a Nissan Leaf, then you should certainly look at this car before you make a decision about what you're going to buy. I'll go into a bit more detail uh, about why I personally bought this car and obviously uh, the specs and a bit of a walk around on it. So when I was personally looking for a car to replace my, uh, my aging Nissan Leaf, I wanted something uh, with the same sort of simplicity. I wanted a simple, reliable car. I wanted something with good air conditioning, a good heater, uh, a comfortable vehicle. Uh, most importantly, it needed to have no tailpipe emissions. So I was looking for an electric vehicle. Uh, I really wanted something with a bit more range than the Leaf. And uh, the most important thing for me is I wanted something with the longest possible battery lifespan. I wanted something with a battery that would uh, ideally outlast my car. So a bit of uh, history about my, my own experience with electric vehicles. Uh, I got my first Nissan Leaf in 2016. I've, I've had three of them. Uh, I've done about 250,000 Ks in them over that time between me and my wife. Um, so my latest car was a 2016. When I bought it, it had uh, 10,000 Ks on the clock and that was in 2017. Uh, I've now done 145,000 Ks in that car and uh, the battery state of health over that time has gone from 94% state of health to 64% state of health. To put that into perspective, when I first got that car, it would do about 150 Ks to a charge on a good, nice, warm, sunny day. Now it'll do about 100 Ks to a charge and in the middle of winter on a cold day it will probably do about 70. Uh, it also has developed a, a high voltage fault with the battery which means that, that if you if you push it hard uh, the battery will fail and you have to uh, go through some technical stuff to make it go again. So in my new vehicle I was looking for something that uh, really didn't have those problems and uh, after doing a little bit of research I, uh, I found the BYD E6 was probably the vehicle that most suited uh, my needs. Um, I kind of looked around one for one for a while and uh, found that they really were not something you could easily get in New Zealand, at least um, there were very few of them around. So a little bit of history about BYD, I mean it's probably a company that a lot of people have never heard of, but um, they're actually really big. So they were founded in 1996, uh, they're a battery manufacturer, uh, you'll certainly have a cell phone or lots of other consumer electronics which have a BYD battery in them. So BYD, uh, in 2003, they purchased a Chinese car manufacturer called uh, Sichuan Mo Automobile Co. Limited. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, and uh, BYD Auto was born. So that, that gave BYD uh, a large uh, internal combustion engine uh, vehicle making uh, manufacturer. And uh, they very early on recognised that the future of uh, motor vehicles was in fact electric. Uh, being a battery manufacturer, obviously they had a real lead in that space, um, and so uh, they they went they they initially went into uh, manufacturing commercial vehicles. So BYD are uh, probably I think among the biggest manufacturers of electric buses in the world, and they've been making them for a very long time, and they have a lot of them on the road. So BYD are now in New Zealand. Uh, they've obviously just recently released the uh, the BYD Addo 3, which is a really nice car, but it is uh, also quite expensive. Uh, and um, like all EVs, there's a significant weight on delivery, but um, everyone I know who's got one uh, says really good things about it. The E6 was uh, first designed in 2009. Um, it was designed purely as a commercial vehicle. So uh, it was a taxi. Um, they basically, that was the, kind of their expertise was commercial vehicles and BYD wanted to, something to practice on. They wanted to make a vehicle which they could uh, iterate through the years and um, basically produce, learn as much about building electric cars as they could. So uh, this car was really released to the public in about 2010 and I think they've been used in China in, China in fairly major, large quantities since about 2015. 
Uh, in 2016 they did a complete redesign on this vehicle and it gained a, a much bigger battery, they uh, improved the brakes and suspension, they changed quite a few things uh, that they'd learned about the, um, from the previous version, the E6Y. This version is called the E6H. So I'll just go through a few of the, uh, the specs of this car, just with a bit more detail for those people who are uh, interested. And I mean, if you're looking at buying one of these, it's certainly worth learning as much as you possibly can. And you certainly should look at uh, all sorts of electric vehicles before you make a decision about what you're going to buy. So the electric motor in this is a 90 kilowatt permanent magnet motor. Uh, it has uh, 90 kilowatts doesn't sound like a lot, but it has 450 newton meters of torque. So to put that into perspective, that is uh, more than a single turbo forward range of diesel. So it has a lot of torque. Uh, it drives a lot like a, 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 a torquey diesel, uh, but it has uh, instant throttle response and it has no gears, obviously, so it's just one motor. This makes it really great. Things like climbing hills and uh, as we'll go into later, you know, like we've tested towing with this vehicle and it's a spectacular tower considering. So the main reason why I purchased this car is actually uh, the battery. So this, this car has an what we call an 82 kilowatt hour lithium phosphate battery. So uh, to put that into perspective, that is uh, twice the size of uh, the 40 kilowatt leaf and even more than the highest uh, top of the line 62 kilowatt hour leaf. When this battery came out from the factory, um, this car came with a 500,000 k battery warranty. Well, then obviously that doesn't apply now that it's been exported to New Zealand. But um, it gives you a bit of confidence about how long these batteries last. So lithium phosphate batteries have some real advantages over your uh, typical um, nickel manganese cobalt battery that you find in uh, many other electric vehicles. So they're uh, far more environmentally sustainable. They, don't, they obviously don't contain any cobalt, nickel or mangan manganese. They're uh, fully recyclable. And uh, they, so they're just a much more environmentally sustainable product. They also last a whole lot longer just because they're a much more stable chemistry. You do, there is a trade-off for that. Um, the main one is weight. So uh, this battery in this car weighs about a ton, um, making the car weigh quite a lot. So it does weigh 2.4 tons in comparison to something like a Nissan Leaf, which weighs sort of 16 to 1800 kilos. So to look at some real world examples of uh, battery longevity on these cars, um, so I was looking on YouTube the other day and uh, there was an E6 in China, uh, it was only five years old, it had 716,000 Ks on the clock on its original battery and still doing over 300 Ks to a charge. I mean, that car has been fast charged every single day for five years, so for a car with sort of 300, maybe 350 Ks of range, you know, it's being fast charged more than once a day because it's, it's doing roughly 400 Ks a day every day. There's just no way that most of us will ever get our cars to that sort of distance. Of the E6Hs that I know in New Zealand, other than the ones that we've sold ourselves, um, the two that I'm aware of, they're both 2016, so the same generation as this car, they both have over 350,000 Ks on the clock. And uh, although I haven't seen it myself, uh, I have heard that one of them has actually been plugged into a computer which can read state of health on the battery, and it is still 97%. Which makes sense because if you look at this battery, so lithium phosphate batteries have a, a cycle life of 4,000 cycles to about 75%. So that means you can charge them fully and discharge them fully 4,000 times. So with a car with 300 k's of range, that theoretically should mean that battery lasts 1.2 million kilometers. So a car with 350,000 k's on it's only done somewhere around you know 1,000 to 1,200 cycles so it's still got a very long lifespan ahead of it. So we'll have a quick look around the outside of the car just so you can uh, have a little look over what they look like and uh, where things are located before you uh, decide whether to look at one in real life or not. So under the bonnet are the power electronics. Uh, they are very, very simple and very robust. I mean, it has a 120 kilowatt inverter discharge unit, so that's the motor controller. And um, I've never heard of any of these having any faults. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty common to all electric cars. Personally, I owned, I owned this Annalise for many years, and I, I've never had any sort of electrical fault with them at all. And I think that's pretty much the story for most electric cars, and certainly the E6s are, are pretty much bomb-proof on the uh, high-voltage electrical side. 
So taking a brief look at the interior, um, it has um, these very hard wearing, uh, I'm not sure whether it's leather or, or some sort of artificial leather, um, but I've seen cars with really high mileages on them and, and the interior is uh, very, really have any damage to them quite frankly. It is some tough stuff. Uh, black plastic everywhere. So it has a very utilitarian uh, dashboard, it's, it's very, um, very useful. Uh, once you kind of have an EV, uh, you will understand how useful these are. Um, it has the current kilowatt draw, what you're instantly using, which is uh, great, along with uh, how much you've used in the last 100 kilometers. Uh, so you kind of use that for planning. Obviously your state of charge and your estimated range remaining, or uh, the gasometer as it's uh, pretty much universally known. Uh, like most EVs, it has uh, an eco mode and a sport mode. Um, has uh, parking sensors, of course, just like any car does. You can turn those on and off. Um, we have fitted a reversing camera to this. They don't come with a reversing camera standard. Uh, they also don't have Bluetooth, but they do have an aux port, so you can run your uh, your phone off uh, and have radio, your, your music off the aux port, which is what I do myself. The back seat's much the same. You know, uh, comfortable seating for three people. Um, it does, uh, the, the seats do fold forward, which we'll show you in a, a minute. It has a pretty cavernous boot, um, as you'd expect for a, a station wagon. And uh, under here is uh, probably the feature that uh, I was most surprised at and pretty happy to find. We fold that back and we lift this thing here up. It has a proper spare wheel, which uh, for anyone who's used the uh, hit and miss goop kits that come with most cars these days, uh, you will appreciate a, a spare wheel a lot. So the seats don't fold fully flat, but uh, they're certainly good enough for most applications. You know, I mean, you can you can fit a big load in the back of this thing still. Uh, for anyone who's uh, curious, those are Type 2 AC cables. They are for um, charging the car at public charging stations. So uh, the E6 uses a... Uh, a type 2 uh, AC charge port which is basically the standard for AC these days um, it can charge at up to uh, 60 kilowatts however the, the largest AC chargers you'll find in New Zealand are 43 kilowatts and they're reasonably rare uh, most commonly you find uh, 22 kilowatt or 7 kilowatt AC chargers so obviously the biggest weakness of this car from my point of view is the lack of DC fast charging Although for me personally, uh, the 22 kilowatt AC charging does make up for it. I mean, very few cars have that sort of charge rate on AC. Uh, if we look at something like a Nissan Leaf, for example, a Nissan Leaf has uh, three kilowatts AC charging. So to put that into real terms, a Leaf will get about 15 kilometers per hour for every hour you're parked up at one of those charges, which is useful at times. But this car will get about 100 kilometers of range. So, you know, like if you go to town and you park your car up at uh, a charger, like the Litchfield Street Chargers here in Christchurch, which is where I usually stop, you know, you're actually uh, getting, you know, a full tank of gas in four hours. So you're getting 400 k's worth of gas in four hours and you're just paying for the parking fees. So, for me, that is uh, a great benefit. Also, once you've got a car with sort of 350, 400 k's of range, you know, you can pretty much go anywhere for the day without uh, charging being a big issue. You don't you don't need to stop every 100 k's like you often do with like a, I know with my 30 kilowatt leaf, you know, I would probably stop, if I, if I drove to Dunedin, I would have to stop probably four times. Um, with this, I would need to stop once for about an hour. And uh, there are, there are obviously, uh, there's charges for this car in Ashburton, Timaru, and uh, Omaru as well. So it's certainly a case that you can get most places uh, in not much more time than it would take with a with a Leaf. So we recently had a tow bar fitted to this car, and we've uh, just done a, uh, a tow test with it. We took a uh, reasonably large box trailer, single axle, braked from uh, Lincoln to Ashburton and back. And, you know, we got 210 to 220 k's uh, of range towing a trailer at 90 k's an hour. So that, that gives you an idea of just how useful this thing is. And I mean, it towed like the trailer wasn't even there just because it has so much torque. 
If you are looking to uh, change to an EV, and I uh, recommend you do, uh, just even just for the for the for the amazing savings you make going from driving a petrol car that's costing you, you know, twenty to thirty dollars, a hundred k's to run, to an EV which is costing you, you know, two or three dollars uh, per hundred k's to run. Uh, you know, you certainly have a look at the E6. I mean, certainly go and drive a Leaf and uh, have a look at those, but uh, you should come and drive one of these because value for money for range and certainly for battery longevity there is nothing else in New Zealand that compares 